The summer of 2020 felt like a reckoning. Not only was the United States grappling with an ever-escalating health crisis, the country was once again finding itself face to face with its greatest ongoing pandemic, racism. As many Americans, especially white Americans, began to face their own complicity with racist systems and structures around them, Seattle's local TV station, King 5, dove headfirst into those complicated waters with their project, Facing Race. In one segment called Frequently Awkward Questions, national experts took on questions like, what can white people do to apologize or to try to make amends to people of color? This is a good example of how the team embraced the presumed discomfort of the topic at hand and set out to stage weekly conversations with its local audience that felt informative and unflinching in equal measure. Their lofty goal was the model of ongoing work of recognizing and dismantling racial injustice and inequity in ways both personal and political. For its daring reporting, its outstanding service, and its absorbing storytelling, it is my honor to present a Peabody Award to King Fives Facing Race. Congratulations. When did you first realize that your race mattered? I was very young, probably five or six, and my father was there with us, and he had to explain it to me. Yeah. They're getting out of the pool because their parents don't want their white children in the pool with black kids. When I ask people of color this question, they'll say, I don't remember a time when my race didn't matter. And that's what we found when we sent a crew out to ask Caprice's favorite question. Kindergarten. Early on, I'm an immigrant. What kind of Chinese are you? You know, where I'm actually not Chinese. But when we asked the same question of a number of white people. When did you realize your race mattered? Any particular incident or? You know, I don't know if I can answer that question. I, I don't know if I still know my race matters. People haven't talked about race when I was a kid. It wasn't something, it was I don't see color, which is a little crap. I mean, being white, I think I had the privilege of not really having to realize that until like a little bit later in life. I kind of look at myself and go like, how the hell did I not get this before? It's not enough to be aware. How can we just sit around while the country is unraveling? You need every single person to be a part of this struggle. Thank you so much to the University of Georgia for honoring King Five with this award. We are so proud. The truth is, it's uncomfortable talking about racism. For people of color, it takes courage to let our guards down and be vulnerable enough to share some of our most painful stories without fear of doubt or misunderstanding or even retribution. For white people, it takes courage to learn from those stories, to internalize them, and to accept the ongoing reality of racism in this country. When this team behind me created the series Facing Race just a few months after the killing of George Floyd, we knew we could no longer afford to avoid talking about race. Our vision was to challenge pe people to speak fearlessly about racism, even at the risk of getting it wrong. To the Board of Jurors, we are so deeply honored and grateful to be recognized by the Peabody Awards. Thank you to the staff of 50 people who made this happen. And thank you to Tegna, Pete Sayers, and Jim Rose for giving us the agency, the time, and resources to dig into the legacy of racial injustice. There was a lot of talk about 2020 being a moment of reckoning for race relations in America. When I interviewed the author Ijoma Oluo for this series, she told me it will only be a reckoning if we make it so. Newsrooms have a responsibility to make it so, and to help to commit to reporting on race and equity with the depth and sensitivity that this issue deserves. Our thanks to the people we interviewed for Facing Race, who spoke up about racism, no matter how uncomfortable it was. Thank you for your courage.